another day, another dollar. How's it going, everybody? My name is Infamous Isaac, and I'm here with another One Piece review series video where I talk about One Piece, each of its arcs, how I feel about it, and all, all the sorts, you know? And today, I'm talking about one of the most important arcs, if not the most important arc of the show, Marine Ford. Or if you, you want to go with the the Crunchyroll version, Summit War. And this, you know, the arc directly after Impel Down. And I'm going to be giving my thoughts on it. So for the non-spoiler side of it, if you just want to hear my thoughts on it, I thought this arc was amazing. It's it's the best arc in the show, hands down. Even in the future stuff with the post time skip stuff, Marine Ford is the best arc in the show. And when we get to the future, where Ichihiro Oda has been mentioning about this arcs being even better and bigger on a bigger scale than Marine Ford, I hope they are because Marine Ford, when I rewatching it, getting that that feeling of just how big and important this arc really is, it, it is not, it does not fall on deaf ears, it really doesn't. Marine Ford is the most important and pivotal part of One Piece to its story, to its characters, and, how, and the future of the show. Everything that happens in Marine Ford influences everything afterwards. It changes the world, which is something that not many arcs do, given their reasons, but Marine Ford it was important, and after it, it felt important. 10 out of 10. 10 out of 10 arc, for sure. The only 10 I've given on an arc, ever. Marine Ford is a 10, for sure. But, yeah. that That's the non-spoiler review for it. But for the spoilers, click off now if you don't want to hear about it. If you're interested in One Piece, if you want to give it a shot. Or if you just don't care. If you don't care and you still want to watch, then welcome. I'm going to be spoiling everything. <laughs> or mostly everything. So. Marine Ford, right? It's it's a short arc. It's only 33 episodes. It's like a normal seasonal anime. Almost two seasons. But a lot happens in it. We go from Impel Down where Luffy, Jinbei, Crocodile, Ivan Kov, Mr. Three, Buggy, everybody are all going to the, the gates of justice to get into Marine Ford HQ. Meanwhile, on the other hand, Ace is getting ready to be executed. Sengoku's there, Garp, Aokiji, Kizaru, a new admiral who we haven't seen before, Akainu, he's there, or Sakazuki Akainu, he's there. We got all these vice admirals, we got Smoker, we have Toshigi, we have Kobe, Helmeppo, all these important marine bigwigs. And Whitebeard shows up. Whitebeard shows up and he's like, Oh, it's Ajibudi Dada, Sengoku. And then Sengoku's like, Hishiro Hige! And then they're just staring at each other. And things are tense. Things are super tense because Whitebeard showed up with all of his allies. All, like so many ships. All the Whitebeard pirates are there. Everybody's there. And things just go. People start boxing. The war is under wraps, or not under wraps. It's underway. <laughs> Things are going wild. People are fighting. You have this dude from the Whitebeard Pirates who has a a move called Rose Rondo. I think that's one of the sickest moves I've ever heard. So dope. You have oh I forgot to mention. There's warlords there as well. So you have Mihawk, Kuma, Doflamingo, a Boa Hancock. You have Moira. Uh. Who else? Who else? Who else? Who else? Thing. Is that all of them? I think. I think that is all of them. <laughs> From what I can remember, I think that is. Yeah, because crocodile. All right, yeah, because crocodile and Jinbei are already like they're they're not. Oh, Blackbeard. Blackbeard. Blackbeard isn't there, but you know why he isn't there if you saw Impel Down. <laughs> but yeah, five out of the six war or seven warlords are uh, are there. Jinbei isn't a warlord anymore, but the, the the navy hasn't really solidified that yet, so he still kind of is a warlord. Crocodile is a warlord. Ah, excuse me. And so on and so forth. So it's it's all out boxing. People are boxing. Everybody's just dueling it out. 
things are going crazy. We we see little Ors Jr., which is Ors, if you remember from Thriller Bark. He he was a a giant reanimated zombie, who Moira used. Little Ors Jr. is his son. He he was there as well. He's a ally of the White Beard Pirates. He 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 goes, he falls, he leads a path for the the pirates, and everybody just starts going, rushing into a, to HQ to save Ace. And while all this is going on, Luffy and everybody finally get to the HQ, but the gates are closed. And then you have Whitebeard. Whitebeard uses his devil fruit, their earthquake fruit. And let me tell you, Whitebeard's fruit is one of the strongest fruits in the entire show. There's, there's no debating it. How much damage, how much poten potential damage, excuse me, it can do to an, an area in the fastest amount of time it, it, it's insane it's incomprehensible it's literally a, a catastrophe a natural disaster with how strong it is and that's the reason why they were able Luffy and everybody were able to get over the gates of justice to get to Marineford they all make an entrance they fall out of the sky and now everybody on Luffy's ship is there at Marineford Things are going wild. More boxing, more fights. You have, uh, what, what, who was he fighting? Oh, Smoker versus Luffy. You have Luffy versus Kizaru. Luffy versus everybody. You have Jinbei versus Kizaru. All these people. Crocodile getting ready to box Whitebeard. Whitebeard getting admiration for Luffy. Everything is just going wild. It's pure pandemonium. Chaos. People are dying on both sides, pirates, marines, people who have families, people who don't have families, who lived their life in the, in, in the military, or excuse me, marines, in the navy. They're all just dying. Death is rampant. But Luffy is still determined on one thing. He's determined to save his brother. And so he just keeps rushing forward, keeps going, keeps pushing. And everybody just follows follows him they just keep going and Whitebeard gets betrayed by one of his own sons ah oh, excuse me I don't know a squad <laughs> for, for people who don't know how to pronounce it S-Q-U-A-R-D squad so just put an R in between squad and there you go but he was convinced by Akainu that Whitebeard is here to sell out the, the, the pirates to get Ace for free and just leave. But in reality, that's not what happened at all. And Squad, uh, Squad, uh, <laughs> he, he, he stabs Whitebeard in the chest. Whitebeard tanks it. He hugs his son and he's like, you've been deceived, you idiot. But I still love you. And then he just starts crying. And Whitebeard goes up, gets off of the Moby Dick, which is his ship. And he is in the fray now. He's boxing. And everybody's just going forward, trying to get to Ace. More fights, more more confrontation. We have a guy in a white beard crew whose name is Thunder McGuy. I I, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what's good with him either. <laughs> but again, pure chaos. Things are just getting worse and worse. Oh, uh, uh. Yeah, you have Ivanka fighting Kuma. You have Ace getting ready to be executed again. Luffy is, well, let me let me read the title of the episode so you can get a get a grasp on it. <laughs> so where's the title? Right here. Luffy at the end of his tether, an all-out battle at the Oris Plaza. Basically, my man's is struggling. <laughs> Luffy is at the end of his rope, and he's he's just tired. He's been fighting for so long, ever since Imp not even ever since input ever since Sabadi, ever since Sabadi Archipelago, he's been fighting, trying to get to Ace, trying to help him out. Then you get to to Amazon Lily, where he gets help from the the Amazons. Then he goes to Impel Down, where he has to fight Magellan twice, and he almost died. Then, then, then he got the booster shot to be able to keep going. Then you get to Marine Ford. All these heavy hitters are here. You have the admirals, the vice admirals, all these people, and he's just he just can't handle it. He's not strong enough yet. 
but he's still going. He still keeps going. And Ivankov sees this and he's like, yo, you, you, we gotta get you out of here. But Luffy's like, please, give me another shot. If I can't save Ace here, then I'd rather just kill myself once this is all over. And Ivankov gives him the shot, and now Luffy's back at it. This is round two. And Luffy just keeps going. He goes up to all three admirals, which are, guide, are, are guarding Ace. The marines are backing up more to the execution stand, and everything's just going crazy. The walls around Marineford are going up, trying to encase the pirates. Akainu's throwing out magma meteors onto, this, onto the sea, which uh, Aokiji already froze. Well, what's this dude's name? Kizaru's throwing light beams everywhere, and Sengoku and Garp are just sitting at the execution stand. Over, overwatching all this chaos. Ace is crying because he doesn't know what to do. It, it, it's just too much for him. It's wild. And all that's going on. Luffy gets past the admirals. And. He gets to Ace. And Sengoku. Well actually no. Uh, Ivankov and Izanzuma help him get up to that, that, that pedestal. And then Garp is like. Luffy, if you want to get to Ace, you have to kill me. And then Luffy just boxes Garp. He gets up to Ace. Son Goku's ready to box him. And then, out of nowhere, Mr. Three, since he was trying to escape, he put on a a, a code, like, or a dress code from the, the executioners at Marineford. And he, he went up to the execution stand, ready to free Ace. Luffy uses his Conqueror's Hockey, knocks him out, but then he wakes up once he, he gets to to the exe uh, or to Sengoku. He opens Ace's cuffs, and now everything is off the cuff, bro. Luffy and Ace are boxing everybody. Brothers united their arms. They're fighting everybody. And now, Whitebeard is all like, bro, y'all need to get out of here. Now. And so, everybody starts running. Whitebeard is prepared to die. He's ready to die. He's he's paving the path for the new generation, the new generation, by sacrificing his his life here, so others won't have to die. And one thing leads to another, and Aka Inu, the smoke blower, he starts talking trash to Whitebeard, saying that this man is always gonna be second fiddle, always gonna be second to Roger. I'm in no place to say this, but Roger changed the world. Whitebeard is always going to be a loser because he couldn't achieve anything like that. Even with him being the last remaining pirate from that golden age, he didn't even find a One Piece. He couldn't find it. All he's been doing is just terrorizing people, watching over territories. He's a loser. And an ace is like, what? <laughs> and he walks up to, to Akainu. And then they start boxing. But Ace isn't isn't a match for Akainu because Akainu's devil food is magma. While Ace is just fire. And you know, magma being stronger fire completely envelops Ace's fire. And he has him at the end of his rope. And Akainu's like, you know what? I'll make an example out of you. I'll kill both of you brothers. And he goes to kill Luffy. And then you have the iconic shot of Ace with a hole in his chest protecting Luffy. Then Akainu rips out his chest or rips out his fist and Luffy catches Ace and then the emotional scene happens. Meanwhile everybody's just stunned and a, a really cool scene happens. Whitebeard shows up and he's standing right behind Akainu and, and remember Whitebeard is 22 feet tall. This man is the size of a building he is tall. So him overshadowing Akainu like that was so dope. Akainu had pure fear in his eyes when he showed up behind him. And Whitebeard punched him dead in his face <laughs> with a whole earthquake to his cerebral. He is gone. Akainu is in the ground. <laughs> and Ace is slowly losing it. Luffy is crying out for help to anybody, a doctor, Ivankov, anybody that can help. But Ace has a hole in his chest. There's nothing they can do. 
and Ace is having this heartfelt discussion, saying that out of all the people I've known, you and Whitebeard and Shirohige made, made me feel like I was actually loved. And he died with a smile on his face. Porcus D Ace. Gold D race. Or Gold D. Gold D Ace. Excuse me. Passed away. Luffy is done. He he's cooked. There's nothing you can do. So Jinbei gets him out of there, and they're now now they're just retreating. the The mission failed. Ace is gone. Now they have to just get out with their lives. Whitebeard is not retreating. He's just setting up an a, an escape route for his pirates by leaving himself behind and fighting everybody at the navy. And Whitebeard is boxing. He's boxing everybody. He's fighting all these people. And then, out of nowhere, sh another person shows up. The warlord himself, Blackbeard, Kurohige. He shows up with all of his goons, and then more people that he added on to his crew from Impel Down, and he's ready to box. He pulls up on Whitebeard. He's like, ah, Pops, it's been a long time. And then Whitebeard's like, do, do not call me your father. I am not your father after what you've done. You're scum. And Whitebeard goes to kill him. But all of Blackbeard's crew pulls up on Whitebeard and they start boxing him. They put bullets, clips into Whitebeard's body. Slashes upon slashes, cannon shots, anything. And he's standing there. Whitebeard is just standing there. And he passes away, saying one final important thing. So one thing I forgot to mention was that this this was all being broadcasted to uh, around the world, so people could see what's going on. And this is one of the most important moments in One Piece history. Whitebeard, before he dies, he mentions the One Piece is real. He confirms the existence of the One Piece, saying it's not a dream. Roger really did find it. And he passes away. And the best part about it, in the in the episode, Whitebeard passes away while standing. He never falls. He never fell to his back. He stood there with no wounds on his back whatsoever. Only his tattoo and his muscles on his back showing the pure indomitable force that was Whitebeard. All the wounds on his forward, like the, the forward part of his body, were clearly visible, but nothing on his back. And in the episode, they also said the amount of wounds that he got, like he had like a couple hundred uh, gunshots, a bunch of a bunch of slashes to his chest, a bunch of uh, cannonballs thrown to him gone through and all and everything but he never once fell to his back he may have fallen to his knees at some points but he never fell to his back and then blackbeard puts a tarp over uh whitebeard and he extracts his devil fruit and mind you if you don't know already blackbeard already had a devil fruit it's not supposed to be possible to have another one to be able to use two devil fruits at the same time but he managed to do it and now he has two. He has the Earthquake Fruit and the Dark Dark Fruit. And now he's boxing Sengoku. Because Sengoku is the last line of defense for Marineford. Blackbeard is here to destroy Marineford with the new Devil Fruits that he has. And Sengoku and him are just boxing. Meanwhile, on the other hand, the Whitebeard Pirates are fighting Kizaru and all of them. And Luffy and Jinbei are running away from Akainu. But then the Whitebeard Pirates hold the last line of defense for Luffy because they're making sure one thing happens. Luffy does not die. And so they get him out of here. The The Pirates are holding Akainu off. And you have Sabri Archipelago broadcasting all this. And you see Law, Trafalgar D. Law, still there in Sabri Archipelago. We see all the worst generation. We have Apu, we have the the Angel Wing guy, we have Beach, we have Bonnie, we have uh, Hawkins, Killer, Kid, Drake, all these people. 
they're all there. And Law is like, all right, man, it's time to go. We're going to Marine Ford. And they're on their way. And once they get there, they take Luffy and Jinbei and they start booking it, bro. It's crazy. Oh, man. Jinbei has a hole in his chest. Like, mind you, Jinbei was holding off Akainu by just taking all the blows for Luffy. Jinbei took a hole in his chest. Jinbei was taking a bunch of punches from the magma. He was trying to run away, but trying to go into the sea, but Akiji froze it. But the Whitebeard Pirates helped him again, like I mentioned. And Jinbei and Luffy are done. They're cooked. They can't fight anymore. And... Jeez, man. Just so much to go through. Holy... Boa, Boa Hancock, she's like, alright. Obviously, lying to the Navy, but she's like, I'm gonna go find Luffy and I'm gonna kill him myself. Give me a Navy ship and I'm gonna go. And she goes, she leaves. And that leaves everything in Marineford back to just the Whitebeard Pirates, the Navy, and now a new addition, Blackbeard. Buggy is still there. Buggy's still in Marineford. But... The ah, so it's such a terrible phrase. The the queers from Nukama Island. Well, Ivankov's people, Ivankov's people. I'll just say that because queers is just such a terrible phrase. Like, my goodness, I can't believe that they really had that on TV, bro. It's so nutty. <laughs> my gosh, but yeah. So it's just. Buggy's crew, the Whitebeard Pirates, the Navy, and Blackbeard. And then, out of nowhere, out of nowhere, another person shows up. And out of all people, if you watch Marineford for the first time, you would never, and I mean never, expect this. But Shanks, red-haired Shanks, shows up. And he's here to stop the war. And the, the thing about it, right? Shanks and Kaido had a run-in together. They ran into each other. And Shanks convinced Kaido to not go to Marineford. Because Kaido was going to go to Marineford. And it would have been Kaido versus Whitebeard versus the Navy. It would have been a whole out, all-out war. Marineford wouldn't have lasted. Marineford most definitely have not lasted but he stopped him and shank shows up he he's talking to buggy he's like oh he's actually done a buggy and then buggy's like don't you hit me with the he's actually done a buggy <laughs> both had me dying bro <laughs> but shanks is like all right can you give this hat to luffy since luffy's straw hat fell off when Ace died and Shanks is like or Lucky Roo the guy with the goggles and the wave cap he's like aren't you gonna go see Luffy it's been 10 years and Shanks is like nah not today I'll see him when he becomes a full fledged pirate and you yeah, have Ben Beckman there pointing a Glock at Kizaru he's like oh Ben Beckman <laughs> You have you have Yas up there. You have all these people, bro, and they're here. Uh, Shanks is like, all right, Blackbeard, how about you just stop for right now? And he's like, okay. And then they leave, and Shanks is like, all right, Sangoku, how about you stop as well? How about we stop the war? And Sangoku's like, all right, because it's you, we'll stop the war. And Sengoku himself said, "If anything happens, I'll take the I'll take the blame. I'll lose my position if I need to, but I'm stopping this war right now." And uh, a cool moment I didn't mention was Kobe. He uh he he was just flabbergasted, completely shocked at everything that was going on because at a certain point it wasn't the navy and the pirates just fighting; it was the navy trying to make an example of these pirates by having a mass extermination, a mass exodus 
of all the pirates there. Every pirate was going to die. And the pirates themselves wanted to kill the navy for what they did to Ace and everybody else. So it was just mass slaughter. And Kobe just couldn't take it. Even if they were pirates and even if the navy thought they were just, he couldn't take it. So he stepped up and he started yelling at Akainu saying please just stop the war stop this isn't justice anymore and then Akainu was about to kill Kobe and that's when Shank shows up but yeah the war is over Luffy is in law ship in the, in the submarine uh Jinbei is there as well and they're they're gone everybody's gone the news of Whitebeard dying spreads all over the world and Marineford the Summit War, the War of the Best, is over. Now my thoughts for it. Yeah, like I, like I said in the beginning of this video, this is the best arc in the show. Because of how much is at stake, how important this arc really is. Like, Ace is a second in, or the, the third in command in the Whitebeard crew. So it makes sense why they would come to get him back. And even if it wasn't just Ace, if it was somebody else, the Whitebeard crew would have done it. Because it's a family. Whitebeard, all he ever wanted was a family, and the fact that he made it, and the fact that he would go to such lengths to save his family, is, is heartbreaking, you know? It's so sad. But, then it's also Luffy being so tenacious and wanting to go save his brother, it was beautiful. Seeing the lengths that everybody would go to to save Ace, and everything that they would do to save Whitebeard and everything. It was, it was beautiful. The arc was 33 episodes long, shorter than Dress Rosa, Whole Cake Island, Wano, Eddie's Lobby, Skypia, Alabasta, uh, th 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 Thriller Bark, all these arcs. But it had the most impact out of anything, anything in the show. Marine Ford is always viewed as want the best arc in the show or top five no matter how you look at it and although my arc my favorite arc might be dress Ro or whole cake island i mean marine ford is undisputably the best arc in the show i can i i have to say that whole cake island is my favorite but marine ford is so good so so good and it it, it just boils down to the characters that are there like uh, well, that's one thing I love about later arcs is that there are more and more characters and it's the same here but it's more big names in this arc like the navy big names the whitebeard pirate big names Shanks, Blackbeard, Luffy, Jinbei, Crocodile the the warlords like everybody even Vegapunk has a, has a name drop in this like it's wild, man. It's so wild. But, yeah. If I had to read Marine Ford, it would be a 10. No matter what. It would be a 10. It's, it, it runs off of the, the legs that were built up before it. And it built so much more for the future of the show. If Marine Ford wasn't here, One Piece, the second half of One Piece wouldn't exist. It does so much for the show. By building on what was already established and by building even more for the future it's amazing and let me tell you <laughs> on, a, on a more lighthearted note or kind of lighthearted I cried so much throughout the entirety of Marine Ford knowing everything that was gonna happen didn't make it better at all I cried gallons of tears man I was so sad watching all of it unfold. I cannot stress enough how sad I was watching Marine Ford. It it impacted me on all another level. Like I think the most I cried on before was either Annie's Lobby or uh what's it name? What's its name? Whole Cake Island. But jeez man, Marine Ford takes the cake. It takes the cake. Now for the MVP. Actually, no, no, let me go with my favorite moments. So my favorite moments from this arc are Whitebeard standing behind Akainu, Ace and Luffy working together to fight everybody. You have 
uh, the the guy from the Whitebeard Pirates fighting Mihawk with the Rose Rondo. That was pretty cool. You have Buggy meeting Shanks again. That was dumb funny. Everybody finding out that Luffy is Monkey D Dragon's son, and all that. Uh, Garp and Luffy fighting. Crocodile, just crocodile. Period. There, there's no specific moment for him. It's just crocodile. He's so good. <laughs> he's, he's so so good. Jinbei as well. The Luffy's moments. They were all great. White beard. They were all great. Honestly, and there's just more. There's more that I can't even name. The end of Marineford was definitely my favorite part, though. Jeez, man. Like Shanks showing up. Kobe's speech. Chills, literal chills, yeah. My goodness. Oh, Luffy showing up as well. Like Luffy showing up on the from falling from the ship, and Luffy showing up in front of the three admirals. That was super sick. But yeah, now it's time for the MVP. Who was the MVP for Marineford? It's a it's a difficult one. So I'm gonna just list uh, the the top five. Alright, I'm gonna list the top five. So, number number five is Whitebeard. He did he didn't do a lot. Well, actually, he scratched that. Number five is Shanks. Now, now that I realize it, Shanks didn't do a lot, but he did a lot. <laughs> he he was really important. Shanks being there and doing what he did was so pivotal to the to Marineford in the end of the story that. He can't be understated. He he definitely deserves a running for the MVP for what he did. Number four though is Whitebeard. Whitebeard, same case, like he didn't do much, but when he did do something, it was felt. Whitebeard's presence was felt all throughout. Holy Whitebeard was cracked. Unbelievably so. Then you have number number three. You have Luffy. Luffy went through hell and earth to save Ace. He was willing to die to save Ace just for his dreams not to come to fruition. Luffy carried all the momentum from Impel down and kept it going to Marineford, but it could only take him so far because he wasn't strong enough to contend. So he falls short. Number two, Crocodile. Crocodile is a is an example of of a character who's better outside of their own arc, which is something to say, right? Because Crocodile was super sick in his own arc, but outside of his own arc, Crocodile turned into a monster, like literally in Alabasta. Oh no, water! Oh, and then outside of outside of Alabasta in Marine Forty, he's like, he's <laughs> actually and it just goes crazy, like, all the times that he saved Luffy, Jinbei, Whitebeard, all these people. White, or, Crocodile was making his rounds in Marineford, bro. He was going crazy. Like, there's no other way to put it. Crocodile was insane. But there's one person who outdid him. And it was Jinbei. Jinbei is the most loyal, hard-fighting, tenacious... Fish man I've ever seen scratch that person I've ever seen in in a long time besides Mr. Two or Bon Clay. Jinbei took the position of Bon Clay and ran with it for miles. He gave all of his loyalty to Luffy to help him out because of how much he was putting forward to save Ace. He was putting just as much forward as Luffy, if not more, because he even when Luffy fell. Jinbei still helped him out. He he kept saving him after uh, neck or time after time. Excuse me. When things were neck and neck, when things were going crazy, Jinbei was always there for Luffy. And even at the end, where Jinbei was literally dying, he prioritized Luffy's life over over his own, with a hole directly in his chest. And that, to me, makes him the MVP of the arc. Oh, jeez. Excuse me, makes him the MVP of the arc. 
and when it goes for music, the music was hitting when the sad moments were going. Well, for the most part, it's just normal One Piece music, not not inoffensive, or well, it's not a it's, it's not offensive. So I'm trying to say, it won't destroy your eardrums. But story, best story in the show. Well, uh, it, 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 it's a simple story. There, I, I feel like there's better stories. Cause you get you get stories like Wano, Dressrosa, and Whole Cake Island later on. So, but Marineford overall, my my or not my favorite, the best arc in the show, Und undoubtedly, the best arc in the show. And once this is all over, I'll be able to look back on it and remember why I love One Piece, and it's for moments like this when it just completely surprises you. And it gives you crazy stuff. But, yeah. That's gonna be it for me for now. Next episode, I'm gonna be talking about the post-war arc stuff. Right before Fishman Island. Where we see some flashbacks. And some other things. And the chapter came out today. Let me, let me talk about that like at the end of this. A chapter, chapter 1044 came out today. <sighs> Man. Man, oh man, man! Chapter 1044 is a really good chapter. I'm not gonna spoil anything on it. It is so good, holy! But yeah, hope you all enjoyed. Thank you all for watching. As always, this has been me praising One Piece in the review series. Hope you all can be here for the next episode, and I'll check you all out. <laughs> Peace.